Mr. Speaker, permit me this opportunity to give support to this motion as presented by the Minister for Finance. Uh, before doing so, Mr. Speaker, I want to um, just quickly respond to the observations of the member for Choiselle, Saltibus, and that is the state of our roads, curbside, etc., overhang, as we have seen in more recent times. And this is as a consequence of a revision of the program which was instituted many years ago, what we call the caretaker program, uh, implemented through the Department of Infrastructure, Local Government and Equity. To a certain extent, we believe that, Mr. Speaker, that this program needs to be revisited, revamped, and to be re-engineered so as to have a greater impact on the nation's roads, primary and secondary roads, and including tertiary roads, Mr. Speaker. As a consequence, we are hoping that very soon, once the proper analyses are completed, that we will be able to institute a new method of taking care of our roadside and to a certain extent maybe to have permanent employment for persons who will be engaged in maintaining the roadsides of the country. The issue of clearing the curb using mechanical equipment is one which we have used before and we still use it, probably not as extensive as we should but it's one that helps in terms of clearing the curb using grader and bobcat and sometimes um, backhoe, except to, the, uh, to say that as you constantly clean that curb, then you erode the shoulder of the road and then it becomes a little more difficult. But that in itself, Mr. Speaker, we're hoping we will also address under the program Infrastructure 2030, which is one that gives us an opportunity to erase some of the deficits in infrastructure in terms of designs of roads, the road pavements, the shoulder and the environment of the road, that in many instances you will see a slight shift away from just simply laying down the carriageway of a road and leaving the shoulders to grass not, not um, manicured properly and sometimes in some instances earthen drains that often clog and cannot be silted or cleared easily. The idea is to ensure that our shoulders are properly kept with sidewalks, laybys, etc., and proper concrete drains are established for ease of passage of water and for maintenance of those drains. So a lot of this is taking place. In the coming weeks, um, we have a, we have um, decided that we will have to have a. A, a, a session of a national cleanup, and I'm hoping that we can get this started sooner than later, to have a cleanup, a national cleanup of our primary road network, particularly because throughout the country on the west coast and the east coast, we have seen the overgrowth, and the weather conditions have not helped us at all. We've had a tremendous downpour over the last few months, and what we see is some healthy um, you know, grass along the road growing and almost seeming to bring about the, the environment of a forest. But that we will take care of, Mr. Speaker, in the coming weeks. But Mr. Speaker, I want to state that this resolution would seek um, the approval of the Parliament to borrow $1.5 million is intended to more or less cover work that has already been done. When the November 6 rain came and did some serious damage to the country, particularly in the north, and the PM gave a breakdown of the damage caused by the rains, uh, totaling $9.5 million with grossly having the brunt of that onslaught, we immediately got the response of the CDB who came to St. Lucia, launched a mission, came to St. Lucia, 
and said that they would provide us with what is termed immediate response loan, IRL, an immediate response loan, to help address the damage caused by those rains. Mr. Speaker, it took almost a year awaiting the CDB to release those funds and four months, four months to the year, they indicated that we should proceed and do whatever we can do, um, focusing on small projects that can be completed within four months. So after eight months of awaiting that immediate response alone, it wasn't a rapid response alone, it was an immediate response alone. We waited eight months and then we were asked to proceed and to do only those projects which can be completed within four months. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, what happened, based on that, that um, directive, we proceeded to identify all of those projects which the ministry could have engaged contractors in uh, to be completed in the period of time under four months. And we spent $2.477 million on that program. So in other words, Mr. Speaker, we have spent more money in terms of the works done while we awaited the immediate response loan to bring some relief to the people in those areas of Grosley, Barbano, Castries North, Ancillary, uh, Canneries, and Castries Southeast. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, it meant that the government has expended at least one million more than we shall receive through this loan to deal with the situation. But there's still, spend, um, there's still pending, Mr. Speaker, an additional seven million dollars, or rather six million dollars of work to be done in response to the situation caused by the rainfalls of November 6, 2022. Grosley, particularly in the Guadalajara Basin, um, there's quite a bit of work to be done in terms of drainage. And the problem we're encountering in, in, in Guadalajara, in that plain, that floodplain, is the fact that the Guadalajara floodplain is compromised by mangrove. And any attempt, even during after, in the aftermath of the rainfall, our attempts to, uh, t to do an assessment in that area and to map out a path for allowing a channel to drain the, 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 the plain, we were met with some resistance from the environmentalists who said you cannot tamper with the mangrove. So that's a challenge we have. And in many instances when you see the, the silting of the Bois um, River, more or less near the sun-built area, that area there. It is as far as we can reach. Otherwise, we are forced, we may be forced to go into the mangrove and that may mean death for the mangrove. Um, so it's a challenge that we have. Upstream beyond the Bois Bridge, there are a number of residents whose properties were compromised in terms of their boundaries um, and as far as the 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 um, proximity to the river. In a number of cases, we've had properties who have been eroded upon, and many people are concerned about future rainfall uh, going forward. But this raises another issue, Mr. Speaker, an issue that the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Infrastructure must collaborate to begin to institute the necessary legislation and the existing laws, rather, to prevent people from building on the riverbanks. Every river has a buffer. A buffer to protect the person's property, a buffer to allow for entry onto the riverbank in the event there is a need to clear the, 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 um, the riverbed. In, it is in law, yes, it is in law. But we must activate it and, and enforce it because many people are building, they've got property near the river, and they build on the riverbank. And in a number of cases, Mr. Speaker, whenever we are doing the silting, which is not a thing that we should practice too much, because the silting the river, the riverbed, 
when you take off all of the stones and all of the natural um, ha habitat, what you're really doing is to increase the, the, the strength of the river to the velocity of the water coming down. In other words, you're making that river a lot more powerful and as a consequence, erosion takes place and it's to our own detriment. So we need to be able to deal with those things. Ministry of Agriculture, infrastructure, physical development, because physical development itself, the planning um, department must institute that buffer in the approval of plans so persons don't um, encroach on the buffer and cause the kind of confusion that happens. Many times we have in, um, cases where persons would, ch would, would, would claim loss of, of, um, of crop and contractors are forced to, um, to compensate. In fact, what we normally do, Mr. Speaker, is to get those persons who we normally give a contract to the silt to engage an insurance company to get some kind of insurance policy in the event a, a landowner challenges them and claim for loss of crop. So this, Mr. Speaker, I must admit, is a situation which we need to look at, but at least we are here to give support to this 1.5, which will allow the government to replenish its coffers, having spent over $2 million on uh, the works which were done uh, in the various communities that I've mentioned. But more so, there's still need for some, w some resources whereby the government can put in place um, mitigation measures uh, in a number of areas prone to pr flooding. And I must admit that notwithstanding the floods that we've had in those communities, whether it's Bexar, Corinth, in any community, Mr. Speaker, and people get flooded out, m people don't move. They cry for a few days and then they clean up and they will go back to the same location and they continue to do illegal activity and then blame the government. But as a government, we are responsible and so we'll continue to respond to the needs of the people to bring a level of comfort and accommodation as best as we can as a government. So Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to support this, this motion and hope that we can continue to serve the people in the manner we've done it in the past. I thank you.